the best gaming mouse is one of the most popular searches on YouTube right now. But I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Every single review you see talking about the best gaming mouse is lying to you. There is no such thing as the best gaming mouse. However, there is the best mouse for you. What are you doing? You said we were trying to catch a mouse. I said we were gonna try and pick the best gaming mouse for you. Yeah, that's why I'm using RGB as bait. <laughs> Just give me that. So gamers come in all different shapes, sizes, genders. We all play different games. Z, show me your hand. What, what type of games do you like to play? I like to play like survival games and more, just more casual type of games. So me, I'm a first person shooter and RPG kind of guy. My hand is twice as big as yours. Are you really telling me that we Need the same mouse? No, that's crazy. What we're trying to do today isn't to find the best gaming mouse out there. It's to find the best gaming mouse for you and her. So we have five of the best selling gaming mouse. Mice? Mouses? Peace? Whatever. We have five of the best on the market today. We're gonna go through, talk a little bit about the specs of them. Z's gonna play some Raft, which is her favorite game, right? Mm -hmm. Currently. And hopefully we'll figure out what's the best for her. But in the meantime, maybe you guys will pick up on some things to help you decide what's the best gaming mouse for you. Okay guys, so the first mouse we're gonna go through, and before we do it, I wanna throw a disclaimer out there. If you see our pups wandering around, they just wanna be a part of the video That's too. That's free dog content, so you're welcome. Yeah. So the first mouse we're going through is the Scimitar Elite by Corsair. What, what are your initial thoughts? Um, first of all, why does it have dial-up internet? What is this? Um, First impressions, very uncomfortable in my hand. It's kind of awkward. The finger spacing is weird. The, like the grooves for the fingers are, are just awkward. It's a little bit too big for my hand, as well as it's heavy. It is very heavy. Okay, so, so the, the Corsair uh, Scimitar Elite, that is geared more towards your MMO players. They like a lot of programmable buttons, which this one has in spades. It has 17 programmable buttons. And that allows you to set everything you okay. want, basically at the click of a thumb. That's not the type of games you play. So this probably isn't gonna be a fit for you. But other than that, like, how do you feel? Like, what's the... But also, I don't, I don't completely it's still awkward even if I were to program these buttons, let's just say, to have to pull back all the way back here to press the 11 key, you know, like, I don't know, it's awkward. The grooves for my fingers aren't like deep enough, so I don't feel, it's not fitting in my hand well. Um, if I were playing this for a long time, I feel like my wrist might start hurting. So it's, it's safe to say it's probably not the right mouse for you. It tends to be a little heavy at 122 grams, but it's it's not a bad mouse. If this is your gamer style, this might be something you want to go for. I would call this more of a rat than a mouse. Okay, guys, so next up we have the glorious Model O. This is our first entry into the ultralight honeycomb models. So the main thing you'll notice is this one has a little bit less programmable buttons and a 
honeycombed back end. The whole point of this is to be ultra light. Yeah, I definitely like the weight of this one. I like the, the lighter ones. Um, it's still a tad bit awkward. Um, they don't have any grooves for the fingers on the on the right side of it. Um, but I, I number one, I think it's really pretty. <laughs> I like the rainbow LEDs. Super. Um, this man has pretty hair. I like it. I like the lights on it and stuff. Um, so aesthetically, which is something that's a little bit important to me, um, might not be important to you, it's important to me. Um, I like it. It's maybe a little too light for me because no matter how much you change the VPU, it feels a little sensitive still. So ultralights tend to be geared towards your first person shooter types, um, especially with the claw grip. You remember the claw grip we talked about? And Z is more of a full hand palm grip player. But if you're a claw grip player, um, the ultralight's really good, especially if you're doing like marathon type gaming sessions where after hours and hours of playing, a couple grams can really make a difference. And you seem to be actually moving around a lot better with this one. This one feels more comfortable in my hand. I definitely like this one more than the previous. Now your downside to this is gonna be a lack of programmable buttons. I'd give it a, a seven out of 10. So the next mouse we have up for testing is the G502 Lightspeed. It is literally, Z, the number one best-selling mouse design for the last eight years. And there has to be a reason for it, right? I genuinely think that this is probably the mouse for me. I love the weight of it. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. It doesn't feel too sensitive. It's perfect for the types of games that I play. I like the grooves for the fingers. It's not awkward. The grip isn't awkward. It fits nicely in my hand. And it also, it feels comfortable either when I have palm grip or claw grip. It's, I can go back and forth with this one. So the tech specs on this um, will go, it has 11 programmable buttons. The weight at a only 114 grams, it's not terrible. That's something that's not gonna bother you over a long haul period. Uh, DPI at 25,000 plus and an IPS over 400. Now here's, here's where I wanna kind of like caution people. It's easy to get caught up in these awesome specs like DPI and IPS and acceleration, which is at 40 Gs for this. I'm sorry to say that we're not going pro as gamers. That tiny difference between 40 Gs versus 45 or 25,000 versus 20,000, that's not actually going to help you which kind of reiterates the fact of what is comfortable in your hand for the long duration, that's what you want to look for. So the final entry into our ultra lightweight honeycomb models is going to be the Steel Aerox 3. And I really like the Steel series and especially the Aerox 3 because it gives you a great balance of customizable features as well as affordability. And Z, I, I wanna hear your thoughts on using that. So this one also has the pretty lights, which I like. Um, this one also has pretty light. Um, it, it also has the grooves for the fingers, which the white one did not have. So I do like that. However, I just don't think I am a person that would like mice these light. Um, the mouse itself has six programmable buttons and the weight itself is only 68 grams. So this is an ultra, ultra light. If you're the kind of person that does these marathon gaming sessions, which you know who you are, if you are, an ultralight mouse is good. Like you can deal with hand and wrist fatigue after a while with some of those 100 plus gram mice. 
The DPI on it is a little bit lower than these others at only 8,500. But either way, I do think this is a great choice in the ultra, ultra light category, especially when you factor in affordability. Okay, Z, so the final mouse we have up is the Razer Basilisk Ultimate. This is actually my daily driver. So I love this mouse. I feel like the size, the buttons, the weight, it all fits my personal needs. But I, I kind of want to hear how you feel about it while I look at some of the more technical aspects of it. This one feels a lot like the um, Logitech mouse, um, which is why I like this one. This would be my second favorite. Um, it is a tad bit big for my hand, which would make sense if this is the one that you like to use that feels best for you. Um, I do like the grooves. I like the weight. It feels a little bit lighter than the one that I was using, even though it's bigger. It's seven grams lighter than the G502. Overall, I would say this is my second favorite one that we've tried. Um, definitely feels almost exactly like the uh, Logitech mouse that we tried earlier. It's just a tad bit bigger. And so it's more suited for somebody like Aaron. Yeah, and so I think that's the reason why like, I like the Basculus and that's my daily driver. Like, great DPI, great IPS. I know a lot of those factors we said doesn't matter that much, but it, it truly fits my hand in the way that I like to game on a day-to-day -day basis. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, don't forget to check out one of these. Make sure you like, subscribe, check out some of our other content. And as always, thanks for watching.